السلام علیکم اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اشرب اللہ اللہ We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. We bear witness there is nothing that deserves to be worshipped besides Allah, the mighty, the wise, the sublime. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, the seal of the prophets, and the recipient of the final revelation to humanity, the Quran for Eid. The best of speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the best of character for emulation is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whomever Allah guides, there is none that can lead them astray, and whomever Allah allows to stray, there is none who can guide but he. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for another opportunity to gather in Jamaat for another Salat al Jummah. Today we want to talk about something that can get us kind of nervous sometimes, make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. If somebody tells you, you know, you, you forgot to tell me how you like that cake I baked, but you didn't mention how I looked in that, that that new suit that I bought or that new dress that I got. We kind of, you know, we want to hear some feedback. Allah says to us in the Quran, if you try to count the blessings of Allah, you would never be able to compute them. As human beings, we miss many things. Sometimes we don't even recognize a blessing when we get one. And Allah tells us about Adam, our father Adam. He says, Adam was forgetful. We found no firm resolution on his part. There's an interesting conversation, an interesting colloquy in Surah Al Arif in chapter 7 of the Quran. And Shaitan says something to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I'm going to attack your creature before them, behind them, on their right and left. And when they get to you, when the day of resurrection comes and they're standing before you, the majority of them will be found to have been ungrateful. In the Quran, Allah says he does not disdain to use analogies. From the biggest to the smallest. And one such example that he gives to us on this subject, in the Quran he says, Say you are at sea, and the waves are bashing back and forth, and you're almost overcome. 
because of the condition on the water. You say, well, I don't know what this got to do with me. I don't go out to sea and I don't go on boats. I'm thinking when Allah uses this analogy, he's describing a situation in your life, in my life, where we are in so much trouble, we're in so much confusion, we have so much going against us that it's like we're on the sea and it's tossing us back and forth. He says, and it's like the waves are about to overcome you. You can't even see a way out of it. Your rudder isn't working. Your mind cannot compute a way for you to navigate out of it. He said, what if I had you at sea? He's saying the waves are tossing you back and forth. He says, you call on me with all sincerity and devotion. Come on now. Mm. He says, and I deliver you. And when I get you safely on the shore, you give part worship to others than Allah. Again, you may be questioning, like I'm not a fisherman, I don't go out to sea. I don't know what this got to do with me. I'll tell you what this has to do with you and I. Frequently in our life, especially in these times, we live in very challenging times. We find ourselves in circumstances where we have no control at all over the things that are going on. We're almost deluged. Not only is the bill collector at the door, they're on the phone, they're texting you, they're sending you emails, and you can't seem to find a way to get out from underneath it. Some of us, it's our children in the home. We're trying to keep them on the Surat al-Mustaqeen. They're being pulled by the kids in the neighborhood. They're being challenged and bullied at school. Sometimes you find yourself in circumstances where it's like you're being diluted from all sides, and you just can't figure out a way to get out of it. Allah says, and then I answer you because you called on me in all sincerity. When we're in those conditions and we're challenged like that, not only do we pray to Allah and supplicate him, sometimes we actually play, let's make a deal. Oh Allah, if you get me out of this, I'll make all five prayers on time. Oh Allah, if you just get me through this, I'll be more generous, I'll pay zakat. Oh Allah, if you just get me through this right here, I promise I'll be grateful and show my gratitude and worship you. And then he says, I get you safely on the shore. He says, and then you forget me. You were in the bankruptcy court, the IRS was on you, or you were unemployed and you were in the unemployment line, or your family was falling apart, the family you have invested your life in, and then he got you safely on shore. He put you on solid ground. He gave you your footing. And when you talk to people, it seems like you don't mention Allah. I see you got your tax thing. Oh, man, let me tell you something, man. My accountant, top notch. He's the best. I recommend him to you. Oh, I see that you don't have to stand in the unemployment line. No, 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 no. Man, I got a job, man. My resume, top of the heap. They couldn't deny me. I was A number one. Family problems are gone, there's peace in the house. I met a wonderful family counselor and they solved all of our problems. What about Allah? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it he we were calling upon day and night? Wasn't it he we were going to beseeching him to help us? But once he resolved our situation, once he got us back on dry land, mm -hmm. We show in gratitude. If we continue to read the ayah, Allah says something that none of us should miss. He tells us that there is a penalty. There is a, rip, uh, uh, a punishment for being ungrateful. He says, do you think I can't send you back to sea again? Do you think I can't put you right back in those circumstances that I saved you from? He says, I can send you back to sea again and drown you. Or I can send an earthquake and swallow you. Or I can send a tornado and take you away. SubhanAllah. There are consequences 
for being ungrateful. When we look at this word grateful and gratitude, grateful is a unique word in the English language. Actually, if you study etymology, it comes to the English language through etymology. It comes out of Latin. And the word grateful is an adjective. Now, I'm going to test your English for just a minute, but believe me, it's tested mine too. But these parts of speech, it says that grateful is an adjective, and an adjective modifies a noun. A noun is said to be a person, place, or thing. So I'm understanding that to mean that if being grateful is an adjective, and an adjective modifies a noun, and I am a noun, if I am grateful, my behavior should be modified, if I am grateful. I'm taking it to mean that if I am grateful, there's a change in my disposition, in my conversation, in my characteristics. If I am grateful, you should be able to see a change in me, because grateful means it modifies a noun. If we go through a list of things that we should be grateful for and we start with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next thing that I would suggest is that we show that we are grateful for our parents. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the hierarchy of who you should be giving your devotion to in your family life, he said, your mother. The person asked him, and after that, your mother. You know it had to be a father asking this. And then asked after that, your mother. And then who? And then you, the father. He gave the parents, especially the mother, this very high position. And he says that even when the parents get older, do not say fee on them, say a word of disrespect to them. Show them respect. We should be grateful that Allah made us Muslims. There are approximately 7 billion people on the planet. And out of them, almost 2 billion are Muslims. But none of us can remember when they had the meeting and our name came up and we got chosen to be Muslims. Allah makes Muslims. We should be thankful. We should be grateful that he chose us and didn't leave us as we were before. We should be grateful for time. I don't care if you old or young, rich or poor, black or white. Allah says everybody does the same thing when death comes. Mm -hmm. They say, oh my Lord, can I have some more time? Mm -hmm. He says he tells everybody the same thing. No, did not I give you enough time to be righteous? Mm -hmm. We should be grateful for time. There's a saying that I've heard in communities, maybe you've heard it too, kind of a colloquial saying. It says, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. <laughs> if he gave us more time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows we will continue to do everything we was doing before. The only reason now we want to negotiate is because we see we have run out of time. We should be grateful for time and utilize it to glorify Allah to seek his forgiveness for our shortcomings, to ask his guidance and his strength in being our better self, we should utilize time to show that we are grateful. We should be grateful for the mercy of Allah. That's right. Many of us, we could say we were living on borrowed time. The life we have lived, the things we have experienced, the things we have went through, the things we have seen and heard and experienced was enough that other people weren't able to make it this long or this far. Mm -hmm. One of the things Allah created was mercy. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes we don't think about that. We think it's just always been here. Allah created mercy. And he says when he created it, he created it so much mercy that from Adam to the last person that lives on this planet, none of us could actually exhaust it. He produced so much of his mercy. We should be thankful to Allah for his mercy. He says to us in the Quran, never despair of the mercy of Allah. We should be showing that we are grateful. 
dear believers, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Although we cannot count the blessings of Allah, and he says you would never be able to compute them, mm -hmm. we can at least begin to show that we are grateful. We should show gratitude for the fact he woke us up this morning, for the fact that we have our hearing, our sight, that our breathing is intact. We should, be, we should not take things for granted. We walk in our house, we hit the light switch, the lights come on. We don't even worry about that. We walk in the kitchen, we turn the water tap, and the water just comes on. We don't even worry about that. We put our key in the car and it turns, we don't even worry about that. We begin taking things for granted until we run out of time. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, visit the graves and they will speak to you. Visit the graves and what you will see is that there are little bitty graves for those that did not live long. There are long graves for those that lived a lifetime. There are some that only have a small marking because they had very little for loose, very little funds. And some that are ornate because they were so rich. But the rich and the poor, the old and the young, both arrived at the same destination. Mm -hmm. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show him that we are grateful for his blessing. Aqulu kali hada wa staghfirullah li walikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salama ala khayru wa mursaleen Muhammad al-Nabi Umi wa ala ali wa sabhi ajma'een. When we employ, when we utilize gratitude, it strengthens us in our moral nature. It helps us develop our iman. It shows taqwa. It is a form of ibadah, a form of worship, and it is a charity for the soul. There's something interesting about being grateful. You can't loan it to nobody. If you run short, you can't go up and ask somebody, can you loan me some of yours? You cannot loan it to anybody. Nobody can borrow gratitude from you. And you can't fake it for very long either. It has to be something that you actually have. Mm -hmm. I look at how busy we are frequently asking Allah for things. Up day and night, calling on Allah, asking him for this, that, and the other. Help me with this. Give me this. Help me over that. And do you know we have a tendency with each other, but even more importantly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of always asking and then when we get, failing to say thank you. <laughs> failing to show appreciation. Allah says in Surah Al-Nasr, إِذَا جَاءَ النَّسُرَ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْ كُلُّنَ فِي دِنِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ فَسَبِّتْ بِهَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَسْتَكْفِيَ إِنَّهُ كَنَا تُوَعَبَ when comes the help of Allah and victory. And thou will see people entering in Allah's religion and crowds celebrate the praises of your Lord. Pray for his forgiveness. Verily he is off returning in grace and mercy. When comes the help of Allah? Allah is telling us, when you get my help, when you get the victory, this is what you need to do next. Celebrate the praises of your Lord. Show him you are grateful. Demonstrate the fact that grateful is an adjective and an adjective modifies a noun. It means you're going to act differently than you did before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can be going through a little something, something, and our whole demeanor will change. Mm -hmm. We get kind of short with people. Our patience runs thin. We don't really have no long conversation because we are so impressed and depressed by what we're going through. But after Allah has delivered you, it should be a change in you. You should be showing that you are grateful. When comes the help of Allah in victory, mm -hmm. celebrate the praises of your Lord. This is a natural disposition that Allah gave us. He tells us in the Quran, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَاهَا فَأَلْحَمَهَا فَجُرَهَا وَتَقَوَاهَا قُدْ أَفْلَهَا مِنْ زَكَاهَا وَكَتْكَبَتْ مِنْ دَسَاهَا It is He, your Lord, that gave the soul its characteristics, its dimensions. He is the one that shaped it. 
And inside of it, imbued inside of every soul, is this knowledge instinctively of what is right and what is wrong. Then he gives us our responsibility. We are supposed to be the caretakers of our soul. We are the ones that are supposed to keep it clean, polish it, enhance it. We are the ones that are supposed to encourage its natural inclination to rise toward pleasing its Lord. He said those who do that, those are the winners in this life. And those who neglect it, who show ingratitude, those are the ones that fail in this life. We should show gratitude to individuals that have helped us during the course of our life, if we can. A school teacher that told you you could be something when everything around you was telling you you couldn't. Mm. We should be grateful for individuals that pulled us to the side and said, if you study just a little bit longer, if you go just a little bit further, if you strive just a little bit harder, you can succeed when everything around us was telling us, it's over, man, you can't make this. We should be grateful for those individuals that when we were down and out, gave us a shoulder, gave us an ear. Nowadays, it's hard to get. People tell you, call me anytime, anytime you want, just call me. I'm here for you. And when you call them, they put you on hold or tell you, call me later. Mm. We should be grateful and show gratitude for individuals that took time along the way just to encourage us. We should be grateful for the people that reminded us after difficulty comes relief. Mm. We should be grateful for those who told us Allah created you in toil and struggle. This is going to pass. You're going to move into something better. Some of us have parents. Some of us have parents that have never been to a masjid in their life. They have never opened a Quran. They have never uttered the name Allah. But they have never stopped praying for us that we are healthy and safe and successful and blessed in life. Allah says, I hear the prayer of every sincere supplicant. Some of us are living over the prayers of our parents who called out sincerely for us to be blessed in our life. And we should show them that we are grateful. Dear believers, if we, in fact, are grateful to Allah for the blessings that he has given us, and we want to show gratitude that we are grateful, remember, it's a modifier. Mm -hmm. It's an adverb. And if we are nouns, it should modify our behavior. Mm -hmm. Our personal life should be different if we are grateful. It shouldn't be like it was before we got the blessing that Allah gave us. Some of us are striving and struggling and looking for our other half. We want our zahid. We want to complete our deen. And we have been struggling and being patient and doing everything that is pleasing to Allah. Do you know Allah will answer you? And when he does, you need to show him that you are grateful. Sometimes we think after we get the blessing, it's party time. It's flashing time. When comes the help of Allah in victory, and thou see people entering Allah's religion in crowds, celebrate the praises of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. Verily, he is oft returning in grace and mercy. Communities should collectively show that they are grateful for the fact that Allah has allowed them to be a community. We have some beautiful communities around this country, but they didn't start like that. It started with a handful of people probably sitting in a house trying to figure out how to collect a little money in order to get a building. It started with people trying to wrestle with how we're going to get enough money to pay the lights, the gas, the rent. How are we going to get the doors open for people to come in? How are we going to take care of the children and give them a school on Sunday or something? It started with struggles being tossed back and forth. And now they're big and beautiful. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget that it is Allah that has given you life. 
and show gratitude. Show that you are grateful. Be a beacon calling people to the successful life, to the right path. Be a beacon of what it's like to be decent and compassionate with people. Inshallah, oh if we do this and show the Allah that we were grateful, Allah says, if you show you are grateful over small, I will give you more. Mm. Some of us, that's why we're stuck. That's why we got small for so long. He said, whoever shows that he is grateful over small, I'll give him some more. Mm. So maybe you just need to focus on that small and be grateful for it instead of complaining about how small it is so he can give you more. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do this. It's a personal habit that I have. <laughs> if I spend four rockers down there asking Allah for something, when he give it to me, I spend four rockers thanking him. That's just me. I'm not saying nobody else needs to do that. If I spend eight rockers asking Allah for something, when he give it to me, I spend eight rockers thanking him for it. <laughs> Scared to death. Then if I don't show that I'm grateful, I won't be modified in my behavior. And I will not be that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we pray for the souls of the faithfully departed that Allah will grant them a peaceful rest in Jannah. We pray for the sick, the dying, and the destitute. He will ease their suffering and ease their pains. We ask his choicest blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on his companions, on his progeny, and on all the prophets. We ask Allah to endear to our heart the Quran Kareem, to make us fall in love with it. We ask Allah to forgive us of our sins and shortcomings and to bless us to forgive ourselves and each other. I mean, Ikama. After prayer, we need everybody to stay for a couple of minutes. We have some important answers. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu wa Lalla Allah, Ashadu wa Nnu Muhammad Rasulullah, we're still looking at a little bit of social distancing, but make your lines, yeah, make your lines straight. Stand as close as you feel comfortable doing so. Don't you line up on the right? Oh, just Okay, we're almost there. Allah to Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in Ihdina siratan mustaqim siratan ladina an anta alayhim Ghaibir al-Maghdubi alayhim waladdu
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah 